This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. All of our podcasts are available from our website, www.sas.ac.uk. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that would help me if um, you, um, I had a, 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 a bit of an idea of your background. Uh, Okay, you know, maybe you could explain uh, because I know it's coming. It's okay. a philosophy department. How many, how many <coughs> philosophers? Think philosophers can identify themselves in the room. So, ah. Okay, and oh. then uh, psychologists, neuroscientists. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No engineers. Yeah, we are. We are. Oh, <laughs> 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 yes. Okay. Because I am an engineer. Okay. By uh, training. <coughs> And so, uh, uh, so, thank you very much. I would like to talk about, uh, in general, about um, uh, uh, perception, and in particular, um, tactile perception or haptics. <coughs> and um, as it's called now, uh, the idea is uh, that, um, uh, for me, what I find very interesting as an engineer, actually, is the fact that uh, vision and audition have been a uh, um, subject of an uh, uh, enormous amount of studies huh? and, and uh, uh, really interesting discoveries in the uh, uh, f function of the nervous system uh, from uh, audition and vision. And, and comparatively, there is uh, uh, relatively uh, little studies in, in, uh, when it comes to touch. And the uh, reason, uh, I don't know, it's maybe cultural, it might be due to other uh, factors. Huh? Uh, but this is what interests me, and I, I uh, have an approach in, uh, <coughs> in um, studying touch. It's essentially to, um, um, uh, if you want, come up with uh, uh, methods and devices to deliver um, or give a very uh, well-controlled stimuli. Just like you know, in vision or in addition, like in, in audition, you have a, a <coughs> method of study which is essentially listening to tones pure tones, which are, you know, it's uh, something which is practical. You can, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you know, understand how uh, uh, discrimination of tones uh, works and stuff like that. Uh, in vision, you have bars and uh, you have uh, colors and gray levels and different features in the optical flow, which are, uh, if you want, part of the optical flow. but. Uh, of the, if you want, normal world. But when it comes to touch, it's much harder to actually decide what are the sort of basic elements. And so uh, as we go, we can um, uh, uh, talk about them. And, and, and for each of these basic elements, actually corresponds to a uh, method to uh, produce them. <coughs> and so that's the idea. Uh, and because... Uh, what uh, else is important to say? Yeah, the, uh, the other thing which is important to say is that uh, everything you feel is the result of uh, mechanics. So you have to, I will, as I, I will uh, go, I will have to point out some uh, special things about uh, mechanical phenomena, which are the basis for what you feel. The same way as uh, optics uh, is the basis for what you see and and uh, acoustics is the basis for what you hear. <coughs> and so here we have, a, just uh, for um, your information, um, you have a, the, the body, is in, uh, in fact, is a, a, a gigantic mechanoreceptor, which is uh, uh, wonderful and complicated and extraordinarily sensitive. Uh, but it has the um, uh, interesting property that uh, this particular a receptor, which is the entire body, is um, uh, not easy to locate uh, physically, like the eyes or the ears, uh, or you have an eardrum, which essentially is the co uh, conduit for all the stimuli. Um, not all of them, because you have one connection, essentially most uh, stimuli. Uh, for the eyes, it's clearly you know, the retina, which um, <coughs> is the primary um, uh, interface. Uh, but when it comes to touch, uh, it's of course clear that the skin is the primary interface. But the skin covers tissues, and uh, all tissues are mechanosensitive. 
And so, so that's something you have to keep in mind. Uh, because, of course, there is a, a lot of focus on the skin. But um, not everything can be explained uh, from the skin. But the skin, of course, is important, particularly the skin that you have inside your hands and, and uh, bottom of your feet, which is the skin that looks, that is, that has um, you know, special features. You can see they, they have uh, prints. Uh, that you have, and so that's a special kind of skin. Actually, anatomically, it's uh, clearly di different from the other type of skin you have. And, and it's obviously more sensitive because if you, for example, try to detect the texture of the material that is in front of you, which is something you do in a, in a fraction of a second by scanning with your uh, fingertips. Uh, you can try now. If you should. <laughs> you should do it right now. If you do it with the back of the hand, uh, you know, the, uh, the sensation is much weaker and, uh, and uh, clearly, um, you know, attenuated. Uh, so, so, no, a very small distance on your anatomy can change completely the, the signal. Uh, but when it comes to the uh, inside of your hand, which is the most sensitive, it's a wonderful organ. It's a, uh, quite complex. It's a mechanical organ uh, and it has a dual purpose. It has the purpose of grabbing and manipulating, and it has the purpose of sensing. And these are two activities that are um, <coughs> performed simultaneously without your uh, uh, intervention. <coughs> and so, the, so that's uh, uh, something to keep in mind. Everything is mechanical. Uh, there is a tendency to intuitively understand, understand touch in terms of a static statics which is the, uh, uh, the basis of you want equilibrium. When you hold an object that doesn't slip, you are engaging into statics. Uh, but you also can engage in dynamics. Huh? And, and dynamics are, um, if you want, uh, particularly important in touch when you have sliding, right? Which is when uh, your hand uh, have uh, relative velocity with the uh, surface that you are touching. And so you can uh, actually experience that immediately. If you touch a table in front of you statically, you have uh, a certain perceptor. Uh, but when you slide, the perceptor is clearly uh, different. Uh, you should try. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sliding is, is, a, is a dynamical phenomenon which involves actually a differential equation. And, and uh, uh, so the result of sliding essentially is, uh, is uh, if you want a stimulus which occurs at the surface of the skin here, of course, but it varies in time and space. And, and if you want, uh, if you think in terms of uh, physics, uh, you have a, uh, uh, it's a milieu, it's like a, a space where, which is uh, mechanosensitive. And then you have a boundary condition, which is at the interface between what you touch and then your own body. And that boundary condition varies when you, you do sliding. And that variation is what is important, is what is picked up by the nervous system to try to find out what is being touched. And, and so, uh, so that's really a, a mechanical, uh, um, uh, if you want, um, a way of thinking. Uh, probably waves are involved, uh, statics are involved, a lot of uh, inter complicated and, and important physics are involved, and in particular, uh, one which has been the um, uh, subject of a lot of attention recently is tribology. So tribology is the science of understanding the mechanics of things that slide. <coughs> and so, so obviously when you are manipulating and grabbing and feeling things uh, slip and by consequence friction, and tribology is the source of information. And it's a complicated uh, field. Um, I will try to give you some in insights about uh, what uh, it gives you in terms of touch. But right now, I'll uh, draw your attention on the fact that your hands are wet. And they have sweat glands, and they have a lot of them. Uh, uh, practically as many as uh, mechanoreceptors, actually. So you have this enormous uh, sweating, <laughs> uh, 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 even humidifying device in your hands and your body, but uh, particularly in the hand. And its function to, uh, uh, in, the, the, in touch is really fundamental. Just think a minute that you have dry hands. So you had uh, uh, hands made of uh, you know, plastic. Uh, uh, you can imagine actually what the mechanics of plastics are when you're sliding over surfaces. The mechanics of uh, uh, 
went with your own biological materials are very completely different. Uh, and one thing which uh, you have to keep in mind uh, is that uh, what you learn in school, like something called Coulomb's law, which uh, uh, um, uh, tells you that actually the uh, traction of a surface doesn't depend on velocity, it doesn't even depend on the surface of inter uh, interaction contact, uh, doesn't hold at all when it comes to uh, biological material. So there is no Coulomb's law, there is a set of other phenomena which are actually driven by the fact that the hands are wet and there is a film of water which uh, uh, is always present between your hand and... Uh, and uh. <coughs> actually this... Um, I'm just going on a tangent, but, uh, but this is a, the, the um, issue on the basis for a very well-known illusion actually that uh, I unfortunately I couldn't bring it by colleagues, by uh, Jumaski. So the idea is that you put headphones on, uh, 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 and then you, and you take a microphone and then you do this. So you can he all hear the, the mechanical activity, which is uh, very significant. You can hear the sound that it's making from here. And, and, uh, and this uh, mechanical activity depends very, very much on the tribology in a complex and nonlinear fashion, which is the source of sound. So now, if you uh, listen to that sound, you can do it at home, actually, if you have a mic and, uh, and, uh, and, and earphones. And then you emphasize the high frequency, like above uh, several kilohertz and, uh, and, and up, then you will feel your hands become dry. So you won't, uh, uh, you won't uh, have, uh, you know, it'll, it'll become, if you want to uh, percept about your own status. <coughs> it's, a, it's a really cool notion and interesting. And it really tells you that you know this mechanical interaction, which is uh, uh, complex, uh, really informs you about you know what you touch and uh, who you are. <coughs> uh, and uh, so there are many examples like such as this one, uh, and we'll explore them uh, as we go. <coughs> so I won't go into the neuroanatomy because it's not so essential uh, to uh, to the purpose today. But uh, there's one thing which I would still want to. Um, uh, uh, inform you about is that the, your entire body is actually, I was, as I said, is mechanosensitive. So, so not only the skin, but the entire body is. And in particular, we have a rich way equipped by a, a receptor which is called the pachinia, which is kind of a small, uh, uh, which is actually a large corpuscule which is uh, distributed all over, almost everywhere in your body, and which is particularly sensitive to vibrations. In, uh, to uh, an extent which is phenomenal. If you take one of these receptors and put it in a, in a, in a uh, uh, ex vivo, like in a, you know, in a petri dish and you make it live for a while and you study it, it, it can detect a, a, a vibration which are uh, smaller than, you know, like practically 10 nan uh, nanometer in size. So it's very, very sensitive. <coughs> and, and so, and you have a, a many of them in your body. So whenever you're actually touching and, and uh, entering uh, contact, uh, these little uh, receptors actually respond in a, in a, in a uh, highly sensitive manner. So something that's, that's very important to, re, uh, to keep in mind. First, why is it that we are so sensitive to vibration? Well, uh, you could imagine reasons for that. But uh, uh, the, the second important point is that actually the source or the origin of sensation is not necessarily located in the skin. It can actually uh, arise from uh, uh, places which are far away. <coughs> and so, um, and it's um, uh, not intuitive, uh, but there's a lot of evidence for that. So how far? Oh, uh, uh, how far it can, well, it can, uh, what gave me that realization is a, a, a piece of work we've done with colleagues in uh, Belgium, within a, at the University of um, uh, Louvain, mm -hmm. with Stonar, and he had patients who, who uh, with the, had their hands uh, reattached after trauma. And, and so, so these hands are not sensitive, they are essentially uh, uh, numb. Uh, for uh, even if the uh, operation is uh, successful, the sensitivity takes it takes at least six months for uh, the nervous system to uh, come back to operation. And these patients could actually sort out uh, roughness in uh, uh, sandpaper just like you and me. 
So we went and, uh, uh, um, uh, and, and did some measurement, and we did, in fact, find that the, the arm is vibrating. I mean, the, it's an it's, uh, it's, uh, acoustic conduit, uh, and the signal actually propagates a long way. <coughs> and I reason to believe that actually whenever you, you are grabbing an object and sliding, actually all, you know, even the uh, hearing could be affected. <coughs> uh, and so, so that's, you know, it's, uh, to me it's a new, it's a, it's a new realization. Um, it's so easy to have our mind, uh, if you want, biased by the fact that, you know, there's a skin and it all happens there. But a bit of physics tells you that actually this is a, you know, sort of a naive, uh, uh, point of view. <coughs> and it's so a lot more than that. Yeah. But this, I'm sorry to, uh, so it means that it can't be the vibration connecting at the surface of the skin, it has to be the vibration. Yeah, I, I imagine the most likely channel is the tendons, the tendinous system, which essentially is a bundle of the collagen fibers. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's known in biomechanics that the uh, signal propagate uh, acoustically in tendons over very long distances. <coughs> and so, very likely. So the point is that actually uh, touch is, uh, is uh, interesting and complicated. First, because it's mechanics. And as I already tried to allude to, me mechanical effects are most of the time nonlinear. They involve oscillations. <coughs> uh, or, uh, uh, you know, um, hard to uh, conceive uh, physics. Uh, they are not located, they are uh, uh, often distributed. It's the real of mechanics to actually uh, uh, have um, uh, fields that propagate over lar large distances. And really the job of the nervous system is actually to, you know, to make sense of this really complicated mechanical world, which the body is, <coughs> when it's uh, uh, in contact with objects. So now we can go through examples of uh, Funny illusions, but uh, I'll show you a movie first, huh? which um, uh, brings the point that actually, um, oh, okay, so that's the, the idea. It is often uh, stated that touch is uh, uh, an ambiguous uh, sense. You know, it's actually biblical. I touch and I believe, you know. So it's, uh, <laughs> um, there's this idea that, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, visual illusions, and but. Uh, uh, so we can full vision, uh, or vision as it's a way of uh, working, which uh, you know is not operating properly in all conditions. Uh, same for acoustics uh, or audition, I mean. And then, but touch is uh, you know you can always trust it because uh, <laughs> uh, I'll give you an example here that shows that I, that's really a wrong way to think of it. <coughs> uh, well, uh, we have a movie here yeah, which was made a long time ago, but I always enjoy it. Watching, I have a, an image of a finger which is sliding over glass, flat sheet of glass. Okay, and then when you, you all uh, uh, know that when you slide the finger over a flat, clean sheet of glass, you feel glass and you feel flatness. Okay, it's clearly flat. <coughs> and so, uh, uh, in your opinion, how does it? Comes about, come about that actually you feel something flat. Your body is not flat, it's round, it's uh, uh, deformable. There is absolutely no yardstick I can discover in my body which will give me a reference for flatness. Uh, nothing is uh, straight and, uh, and, and yet uh, you know, this uh, sensation of flatness is obvious to anyone who has put fingers on a, on a piece of glass. So uh, we can uh, look a little more carefully uh, what goes on actually. And this is what happens actually when you, um, oops, sorry, <laughs> it's a bit of annoying because I don't have a feedback on the screen. Okay. So what do you notice? Well, sure, there's friction, okay? There are uh, places of the skin that stick. They don't slide, and you have places of the skin that slide, and then there's a boundary, and that boundary changes according to the load. Okay, so these mechanics uh, are um, 
really fundamental because they happen all the time. Whenever I touch an object, it always happens. You have places of your body that are sliding, places that are sticking. There is a boundary that uh, uh, evolves in between. And somehow, from this uh, uh, phenomenon, I have the sensation of you know, glass and uh, you know, uh, shape. <coughs> And so, uh, and so uh, essentially, I have uh, in that case two sensations, a material, and uh, I have a, a geometry <coughs> to, to present. And so, uh, uh, it's uh, very interesting to think that actually these precepts come from this movie, you know, essentially. <coughs> you said that we have no yardstick for flatness, but do we have a yardstick for any, any uh, sense? What about? Linearity in the visual system. Same, yeah, yeah. Same, same argument. You have a round ret a retina. Uh, the sampling of the retina is not uniform. But you don't even have to go that far. I mean, why? Why should straightness of a line mean anything special? Uh, well, this question has been uh, uh, discussed by my colleague in uh, in Paris Five, uh, Kevin O'Regan. You know what? What is straightness? Huh? Well, optically, it's clear. You know, light travels straight in in a homogeneous milieu. And and what is a line? What is straight? It means it's a mathematical relationship. It means if I have a, a, a straight line, I shift it. It's still the same. It's called an invariant. So it's it's invariant under certain transformation. And in fact, the quality of a straightness is invariant under many transformations, including the roundness of the eyes, the non uniform sampling of the retina and so on. And so that's what is straightness. It's nothing to do with the, um, if you want, the fact that you can take a ruler and, and match it. It is simply this mathematical property. So for touch, you have a similar reasoning. What is flat? Essentially, there's a set of transformation which you can apply, which will essentially is common to this property of a surface to be flat. So uh, give examples more mathematically. Distinction between smoothness and flatness. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So that's a very good question. Um, um, it's known in vision that uh, um, the visual processing depends on scales. There are small things and big things, uh, and there are uh, uh, features about uh, optical, I mean, uh, uh, visual scenes that are important at different scales. Uh, in mechanics, same idea. You really have a, 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 a critical, inf um, if you want, um, influence of the scale at which the um, interaction occurs. And uh, if you want to go in that direction, I have also slide on the notion of scales in, in touch. And um, I believe today there's actually maybe four scales which are um, um, distinguishable uh, and are based on rather sound mathematics. Uh, roughly speaking, these scales are, uh, 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 well, it's easy to think of them. Uh, the smallest have to do are commensurate to your fingerprints, small things. The next is commensurate to the size of a finger. The next is commensurate to the size of an arm. And the next is, is really a body. Uh, <coughs> And uh, we have some ways to explain that if you want more rigorously, but uh, that's, uh, that's really some... And, and, and reason to believe the nervous system really has machinery for all these different scales. This is for space, and for time, you also have scales. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to deviate in the direction right now, okay? <laughs> Uh, so that was for that movie, <laughs> which is uh, really interesting. Uh, and so um, now the next thing, what comes after the something flat? Well, a uh, simple uh, tactile in interesting object is uh, something that is sharp, you know, like an edge. Okay, so uh, an edge is a... Uh, so mechanically, what is an edge? Well, geometrically, it's a place where if you only have two low curvature surfaces meeting, and then you see, and then you have high curvature. Okay, but that's 
that's a description, but uh, mechanically it means it's a region of high stress or high strain, to be more precise. <coughs> so it's a region where actually, um, if you want, the tissues are more distorted than elsewhere. That's really uh, uh, how you can think of it. So that's an edge, huh? uh, which is very different from a, an optical edge uh, in, the, in passing. Uh, an optical edge uh, it has the property of uh, being um, 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 allowed to be discontinuous. In fact, it's really uh, uh, something important in uh, uh, optics. Huh? When you have an occlusion, you have a discontinuity, which is fundamentally present due to the occlusion. But in a mechanical world, uh, uh, discontinuous are not allowed. Discontinuity means that you cut yourself, essentially. <laughs> So it kind of happen. <coughs> so you have a, so you, when you have a field which describes the, the shape or your state, mechanical state of your body, you cannot have a discontinuity. That's, I mean, if it happens, you're you're dead or you have you are you have a you know an injury. <coughs> so discontinu mechanical discontinuities are one order less if you want. They are uh, smoother, <coughs> and that's uh, that's really fundamentally important uh, in terms of uh, what you can. Um, uh, extract from uh, tactile information. So, going back to the movie, <coughs> uh, <coughs> I'll get into the next one and show you a place where we have an edge and we can look at it uh, in terms of uh, what it does to the skin. Okay? <coughs> and so, here, uh, like this. And then here I have a small, uh, like a small region here, which is uh, a millimeter wide, and it's it's uh, about a millimeter high, so it's a small edge actually. It's not perfectly sharp, but you, I can slide over it. And then when I slide over it, uh, something also uh, complex happens. The skin moves. Uh, uh, it's invariant where there is a flatness, and then it compresses, goes through a. Um, uh, um, um, uh, a neutral point, and then stretches, and then go back. Okay. So if I take one particular place of the skin, it undergoes a trajectory, which is uh, as a um, uh, an, um, an even characteristic. Okay. So it has two of I saw two maxima which are uh, symmetrical to the origin, and somehow you could think that actually this property is what is an edge actually uh, in um, in uh, in a mechanical sense. It's a ridge, not an edge, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's a ridge. So but it's a small thing. Yeah. It's an edge. Yeah, yeah. An edge. yeah. So it's an all right. Edge. So, yeah. but, but you cannot have a perfectly sharp edge, mechanically. I mean, if you take a knife or a um, uh, razor blade, you will cut your finger. Well, neither can you or grind because of the... Yeah, there's always some... Yeah, exactly. Pressure. There's always some smooth image. Right. Can you fool this with the mark the equivalent of uh, Never, uh, never mm, tried it, but never. I think it's different. I think there is a. Well, I have some slide on this actually. <coughs> uh, that's a really good question actually. <coughs> uh, my belief. Okay. Well, uh, since, uh, since the question was called, I'll, uh, I'll go. I'll go to the next one, and I will simply uh, show. Uh, like we started a long time ago, this project. Huh? of uh, 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 trying to make equipment so we could actually move the skin in ways we wanted uh, and computer control, okay? And so uh, if you know a little bit about the field, my, uh, all my colleagues who have uh, the same problem uh, think of tactile displays in the sense of, um, if you want, uh, trying to reproduce the surfaces that are uh, found uh, around us. Okay, so the um, simplest way to think of a tactile display, the equivalent of something, of a speaker for the finger, if you want, uh, is to have a, 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 an array of pins, and then you move them up and down, and then you try to re you know, recopy the surface that you're uh, um, uh, trying to uh, uh, reproduce. And, and it doesn't take to be a, an engineer to realize this is a very hard project <coughs> uh, because uh, if you want the features that you are talking about are sub-millimetric so if you want to have an array which operates properly 
it has to have, if you want, a sampling period, which is uh, uh, millimetric or better, uh, which is, um, uh, wow, well, we all have played with electric motors and one day or another, they have a certain size. It's very difficult to put many uh, in a small place. <coughs> in fact, there are fundamental physics that prevent you from doing so, uh, because electric motors are um, uh, not perfect, they generate heat, and when you pack them in a small place, then you have a, a thermodynamic problem, I mean, it's just cannot, you cannot do it. So uh, we thought there would be a better way to do displays than uh, 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 pins. And then move it. Okay, now I'll do a bit of mechanics to try to explain the reasoning. <coughs> um, you've seen that movie, yeah? You've seen the skin the deforms, and whenever I grab and feel objects, that's what happens in complicated uh, body, which is like me, uh, is a three-dimensional object, and uh, it has a mechanical state, which is described essentially by the position of all its points. So when it deforms, uh, when you have to, what you have to do is to describe the displacement of all these points, uh, and then you come up with a displacement field, which we call in engineering uh, strain, like the relative displacement of these points. <coughs> now, if you work out the fact that it's in three dimension, you find out that the strain is described by a quantity which has six dimensions, at least in the small, uh, for the small range. Which means, for if I take uh, this bottle here and I want to describe its mechanical state at one point, I need six numbers. Okay, and these six numbers have to be specified in the entire volume, which is a lot of numbers, <coughs> really tremendous, really uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, set of numbers. Huh? And and when uh, uh, really to be able to completely describe the state, you also have to. Uh, think of these numbers dynamically, which is actually uh, expressed by a uh, you know, wave equation, but uh, I don't have to go into detail to, for you to feel that actually there is a lot of dimensions which are needed for describing the state of a uh, body. And yet, uh, we are perceiving animals, uh, so whenever we grab things, uh, we have uh, clear and simple percepts, like weight and smoothness. And, uh, so it's obvious to me that we're not measuring this uh, nine-dimensional field at all time. Uh, maybe we measure some aspects of it, and that's those aspects are very important for perception and uh, uh, manipulation. <coughs> and so, um, how many? I don't know, we thought one would be enough, actually. Uh, and that's the so that's the idea of the display. If you just, you know, uh, um, maybe if we could, did a good job at modifying the mechanical state of a small region, just one, you know, one average, one number, but do it in a proper manner, then we would have a good display. So that's, that's the idea of uh, what we did here. You have a, a, an array of 10 by 10 uh, um, electric motors, uh, small uh, piezoelectric vendors. And what they do, this is 10 millimeter in size, and then you have like little regions of a sub millimetric size in between. And then when you acti activate them, then you can actually uh, imagine your skin is, is this particular region. No, you can actually pull and stretch every single uh, location. And uh, uh, it's only one number okay, per uh, region. It's not uh, too complicated, but actually, technically, technically it's quite feasible. I mean, we did with a master student. That was a very nice piece of job, and it, but it worked, you know. So and so we made that machine, and after two years of uh, efforts uh, with a hundred activators, and uh, we put our finger on this pattern, uh, hoping to feel something. <laughs> so uh, do it again. And when you think you would feel from that, so I'm taking every piece of your uh, uh, surface and I'm uh, pulling, stretching, pulling, stretching, which is. Essentially, I'm uh, applying mac a maximal mechanical uh, effect. I really, every point is being stretched and pulled. And <coughs> so, what you, what would you feel from that? Something like that. Is that what we did? Yeah. Well, uh, maybe, well, but uh, to our distress, just we feel just nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Because of the 
but you, essentially the first set was zero, it's like a yeah. like a small drain, or but nothing you could talk about. Right. <coughs> so that was really disappointing because we spent a lot of time. And one of them alone, if you just have one of these things, and you start ah. to feel that, <laughs> <laughs> then you feel fine. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's lateral inhibition, do you think? Uh, maybe, probably. Uh, but uh, that uh, brings me to the next point. Which is, uh, we went to sleep uh, very disappointed uh, after spending all this taxpayer money and uh, efforts to get to this point. And we did this experiment here, thought a bit about it, and then we programmed it so we could actually. Um, I was the, the viewer. So now, if you have a tiny bit of background, you will, um, in physics, you will guess what this is. Mm -hmm. Is it a wave? It's a wave, yeah. So, so, it's a, so a wave has, has essentially three uh, uh, characteristics. It has an amplitude, it has a speed, and it has a, a, a frequency, of the spatial frequency. And uh, uh, to our delight, when you put your finger on this perceptor, you feel all three percepts. So you can tell how big it is, how fast it goes, and what is the distance between two um, uh, APCs. Very clearly, uh, just as clearly as, uh, as uh, putting your finger on a, you know, on a corrugated surface and sliding. And yet, I repeat, there's only one number which is given at each point. Okay, there's a bit of stretching and pulling. <laughs> so that was uh, very interesting to us. It really meant, if you want, that you can get by not having to recreate all the physics, but the, uh, there are certain aspects of the physics which are particularly uh, uh, you know, meaningful to the, uh, to the nervous system. <coughs> and uh, I have some examples of that, actually. We, we can... Uh, uh, experience uh, later if you're interested. <coughs> I didn't bring the display, I almost could because the, we have a new version now that's portable, so we can bring it around and do some, you know, practical experiments rather convenient. But that's more historical but still uh, interesting for today. And uh, I'll just uh, try to explain a little bit uh, 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 carry on on the question about uh, you know what the mechanics mean to touch at the sort of a basic level <coughs> and so um, uh, here I have some uh, uh, diagrams to show what happens to a body when it's being impinged by another okay so first thing to um, uh, 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 keep in mind is that whenever you two objects touch they never touch through a point that's, um, you know, uh, uh, an abstraction that has no relevance. <laughs> they always uh, uh, interact with surfaces, very important. And these surfaces can be small or big, but there is always a, a surface in, in between two, two bodies. You know, even if you take a piece of diamond against a piece of diamond, the contact surface will be small, but it will be there. Okay. <clears throat> and we, of course, we are soft and uh, deformable, our nature has made us in such a way that uh, whenever we grab an object, we need huge, very large surfaces <coughs> for very small loads, which is um, another question very quite interesting. <coughs> but uh, so I have a, a, a so what happens when two objects are contact? The rule one is that they don't interpenetrate. That's really uh, uh, how the, the world is made. Okay. <coughs> And so when two objects touch, what they do, they deform because they cannot interpenetrate. So they have to accommodate this uh, common surface. So the most classic uh, case of that is when you take a small object and then you push on the, on the, on the body. When it happens, then you essentially compress the uh, central region. Okay? And then the, the compression field sort of vanishes. But before doing so, it changes sign and then vanishes. 
And, and what the line that is in gray here indicates another aspect of deformation, which is called shearing. Okay, so whenever I take an object, I can do two things to it. I can either um, uh, deform it by compression, okay, which is one component of that uh, mathematical object I was talking about, and the other component that I can also shear it. I can deform it sideways if you want. Okay, and these are independent uh, quantities. <coughs> and in in uh, in, uh, in three dimension, you have three of each. In a plane, you, have only, you can only speak of two. <coughs> so that's quite interesting because the shearing, uh, if you want, uh, uh, value uh, makes this function here. Essentially, it has a maximum on each side of the object. Huh? So essentially, it means whenever I push on a, I do a an edge like this, I shear my tissues in one, uh, uh, according to one side uh, on the side and to the other side on the other. <coughs> so that's where lateral inhibition comes in, <laughs> because um, uh, uh, these, um, if you want, the mechanics happen without any uh, need for new, uh, neural intervention. This is mechanical. <coughs> so that's that's actually quite interesting. Um, there are, I would like to believe that actually the nervous system uses that without having to compute it. It's sort of a, a cons free. <coughs> Uh, it's interesting, no, hard to prove, but uh, um, we should go in the direction of that. Uh, so what we did with the display, actually, is uh, without knowing it, is this. If we work out all the mathematics, which are on uh, skip, we put a bunch of uh, little, um, uh, which we call tractors, like contactors like this, but instead of pushing inside the skin, we pull sideways, right? <coughs> And then, uh, so uh, when you work out all the equations, you find out that when you pull them sideways, oh, there's a, a bug here, so you go this way, you create a region of high strain also in between. And somehow the compression and the shear have the same, not the same formula, but the same, uh, if you want, characteristics. Okay. Uh, not quite the same, actually. There is a, a change of the angle. There is a 90 degree uh, uh, rotation. But uh, if you have a bit of imagination, you can um, uh, and belief <laughs> and trust, <laughs> you can imagine that the uh, uh, nervous equipment, which is in the skin here, is not so uh, smart or sensitive to be able, at the millimeter, millimeter size, to be able to tell which component is which component. It's sensitive to uh, averages. So as far as the um, uh, nervous system is concerned, these stimuli are the same. So there are two consequences to that, um, which are, uh, one is practical. It means I can make displays, which are copying, if you want, uh, real mechanics, but these displays are much simpler than those things. Uh, but it has another consequence, it means that as far as the um, nervous, uh, I mean, the nervous cells are concerned, you have an infinite number of boundary conditions giving you the same signal. And, and uh, so that's really interesting. For people in vision, it's very uh, uh, meaningful. <coughs> and so, so um, uh, essentially, that happens to you whenever you think you are feeling an object, you're not really feeling it. You're actually uh, doing what is necessary to recover what the object is doing to your body in a non obvious fashion. And since uh, I've grabbed your attention, uh, maybe you could uh, try to demonstrate on a naive subject here. Yeah? <laughs> uh, you're not naive anymore. Who wants to? Uh, <laughs> Colin, try, try Colin. It's not really naive, but that's... So, so that's a good question to uh, reproduce what I was talking about. Okay, I will, I will come here. Okay, you put your finger here, mm -hmm. and then you will explore that region. Pushing a more wanted. So what do you feel? Right. 
No, I don't see. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> so uh, at this point, I guess the conclusion is that when things are small, then the perception of the tactile, or, you know, haptic perception depends mostly on contact mechanics, which are the mechanics that are, uh, if you want, uh, um, um, ruling these phenomena. <coughs> and, and, and when they sliding, there is also um, tribology, which also is part of contact mechanics. And these are the source of your information. <coughs> And so I will uh, skip this part because uh, we have more things to talk about. And uh, yes, this is just to show you that we have a practical means to create this tactile sensation now. Uh, I'll illustrate with this movie here. Uh, here is uh, someone uh, exploring a. Um, Uh, virtual surface, which is actually uh, represented in the computer, and that person is moving around as if you were touching, if you raised, uh, you know, raised the surface of, of the kind which is uh, used by the blind to decipher maps and shit. But uh, the percept is very strong and very clear. It really feels like a, a, a raised map. But uh, one example. So the raised map essentially creating regions of high stress, and that's all it takes really to feel this effect. Okay, so uh, ah, that's a good movie actually. <laughs> Here, uh, that's a study also that was done a long time ago at the uh, Miguel, uh, which is no longer pursued, but I will certainly do it one day. If, <laughs> if uh, the idea we ask a, a blind person to detect whether what was touched through that device was a, a square, a, a circle, or a triangle, you know, something very uh, basic. And, um, and this is what happened. So on, fortunately, I only have the case of the rectangle, but it's still a very interesting movie to watch. Uh, so the person is not informed it's a rectangle. The person knows it's one of those three cases. Okay. <coughs> and so you can see the behavior, it's quite uh, very interesting. Exploration, nothing, finds an edge, tracks the edge, find the corner, overshoots, find the right edge, zips on the other side, already knows it's a rectangle. <coughs> and and sensation you use the second uh, 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 movement to make sure you know that was actually the rectangle. And from that point there was no uh, hesitation. So I'm sure that means something to you also in vision. I, the scan path, very much, uh, <coughs> very much uh, visible. <coughs> in, uh, if they do it very slowly, um, do they lose track yeah. of, um, I mean, like, because it's almost like they sort of, they don't see it, do they? they, they it's, not a, it's not a visual, it's not a visual. Is it a visual, it's not a visual thing. It's like they, they feel it as a you square. You feel it through the yeah. So the finger it, yeah. Um, but if they do That's it too the slowly, finger. if I speak too slowly, I can forget what I was talking about before. I, you know, you, you, can you forget if you do it too slowly? Can you forget? Like, can you sort of lose track? Oh of yes, sorry? that's a really interesting question. The tactile memory, yeah, so like the, tactile the traces, sort of the very uh, very little the research on the topic. Very little. <coughs> and but incredibly important, isn't it? Yeah. In stereo uh, process, right. To be able to create a continuous rigid representation of the real three dimensional object on the You have to of, have a, a, a trace. Up, yeah. Some kind of computed Absolutely. representation which has continuity. But I know very little research on the topic. My impression is very short, it uh, tends to vanish quickly. Uh, but uh, for certain type of signals, maybe some, some other shapes that will last longer. Uh, mm -hmm. Clearly, I mean, the uh, works of uh, uh, Lederman uh, you know, show that actually you can uh, 
you know, experience through your hands, uh, complex, really complicated shapes. Uh, I have also colleagues at the University of Kentucky who have done very good, interesting studies on recognition of complex shapes uh, and computer vision. Uh, but these are, uh, it's a type of stimuli, there are many others. Uh, vibrations is a very important one too, textures and so on. It's a great field, I mean, it's uh, very little uh, known and uh, it should be known. <coughs> All this um, uh, time based. Uh, actually, it's uh, very important because uh, uh, many psychophysics studies uh, which uh, um, involve uh, testing people in touch, it is very little known on how long these uh, uh, traces last. So the results are really dependent on, uh, on uh, the protocols, and, uh, <coughs> and if we knew more about it, uh, I guess the results will be more solid <coughs> than they are now. Um, I have a personal example of that, of a failed study. Of, uh, uh, we were asking uh, people if they felt, uh, we asked them to hear sounds and then feel vibrations simultaneously, hoping that they would, uh, if you want, interact uh, positively. Okay? And we realized uh, after much work that actually uh, all the answers were driven by uh, the last time we presented the stimulus when they were such. So essentially, <laughs> there's a huge, enormous order effect. Uh, uh, it's, you know, <coughs> uh, but it only happens in certain cases. So it's a world of uh, interesting, uh, uh, very interesting uh, uh, phenomena, and they are very important. <coughs> it would be very easy to modify that to do memory, though, Yes, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, it's a great field, yeah. Lots of things uh, to be done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's for small things. So uh, um, we had the Ministry of Research coming to the lab. So we showed him a really fun uh, stimulus, which is taking the display here. And then the idea is that you push on it, so like on the surface. And then we programmed it, so actually it would uh, uh, undergo uh, uh, velocity when you pushed. So the more you push, the faster it would uh, move under your finger. So it's something we, we could do. And we asked him what he felt. <laughs> he was really puzzled and you know, it's fun because um, when you have a display that works well, whenever uh, you show it to someone who has no previous experience, it always uh, draws smiles and, uh, and uh, amusement. Uh, in the same manner, if you want the first time you see a movie, it's uh, marvelous. And so this, this really this uh, device uh, does that. And whenever you uh, use it, <laughs> it's really fun actually because it, it really does something that you have no prior. <laughs> and he felt actually that stimulus was a, um, a reptile. <laughs> I don't know where that comes. I mean that's possible. You know, a reptile, you push on it, and it's <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have uh, no longer we. No longer have the same minister, so now we have to, <laughs> we have to bring him again. Uh, I'll skip that because uh, I wanted to sh I'll show you another uh, aspect. I was speaking of vibrations and the complexities of mechanics. So it's really interesting that you no, know, I ask you to scan um, your uh, desk in front of you and then uh, felt that actually they were not smooth, and um, and you did uh, feel that they were not smooth. And they're kind of sticky, and you have you know all these different percepts. <coughs> but um, well, again, uh, it would be a really good thing to be able to uh, uh, have a, a, a device that could give you this percept. So it would be rough and smooth and silky. And so um, uh, uh, roughly speaking, the time domain for uh, touch is from uh, DC to kilohertz. So that's, that's the <coughs> what you're talking about. When, uh, and then again, when you were th uh, thinking about this complexity of the mechanics, if I make my finger deform at a kilohertz in with this uh, really complicated uh, um, mechanical uh, effect, there's very little chance that the nervous system is actually completely aware of the uh, mechanical state of the finger at a kilohertz. It has to take a lot of, uh, interesting shortcuts. <coughs> and we can go as far as saying that actually 
all what is left of that scanning is essentially one number. Okay. It's possible, uh, you can decide it's possible. Uh, that's the, that one number which is important, and that's what we did here. But uh, um, I'll explain how that was uh, done. You have a surface here, and then we had the um, a force sensor on the side, very precise. Okay, so it could, and the surface is very rigid, which means that uh, all the mechanics going on at the, due to the tribology, this complicated uh, interaction, is really well measured by that sensor over bandwidth which is compatible with touch. So it's a very good sensor, very wide bandwidth, like acoustical profit, uh, quality, if you want. And, uh, um, uh, and that is also true in the, the uh, dynamics, so it can pick up uh, uh, four orders of magnitude, a signal which is, uh, you know, covering many uh, decades, like in acoustics. <coughs> so we have this sensor, and then we uh, ask people to scan, and then you measure, and what you get is a very complex signal, which is very complicated and interesting, actually. Even if you take a smooth surface, you have this oscillation. Even if you have a ondula smooth ondulation, because of the uh, tribology I was talking about, you have also rich signal, and I can tell you actually, which is uh, here, which has a, a, a typical characteristics. It has a, a, a weighting of frequencies that decays over the square of frequencies. So essentially, it's dominated by damping, essentially. <coughs> and so you have this complex signal, which is, depends on the material and the geometry of the surface you're talking, uh, you're touching. So and what we did, we took it, and then we took the same device, but now instead of uh, uh, make, uh, measuring the interaction, we actually make the finger vibrate the same way, uh, in the same manner that was measured. Okay, so it's a copy, I mean it's a record copy. But if you think of it a minute, there's a bit of a philosophical problem here. What are you really measuring? Um, so, um, Mm, how can I explain that? You, um, when you have um, uh, dynamical systems, uh, they are uh, described completely by their state. Okay? And in case of uh, mechanical uh, systems, the state is entirely described by the movement of, every, of each of the points. Okay? So that's known from uh, Hamilton and Lagrange. And that's all you need. Now the notion of a force, what is it? What is it? It's when you have this uh, mechanical system that's moving, like a planet or a finger. What you call a force is, is essentially, it's the action of another system that you don't know. Okay? For example, here, uh, I'm essentially attracted to the center of the Earth through distance forces. Okay? And, well, but the forces are really not existing, it's really because I'm interacting with the Earth. Okay? The forces are simply an abstraction. I put on the right hand side of the equation so I don't have to think about it. But really they don't exist. Okay. <coughs> and so, so the nervous system has the same problem. It really has to tell why is it that's making me move, essentially. <coughs> so that interaction. So, so here, when I take a force sensor, what I really want to do is make it incredibly stiff. The, you know, the stiffest I can from my uh, engineering skills such that actually it has no influence on the measurement. Okay? <coughs> so that's what we did here. The force sensor was proven to be, uh, I don't know, a thousand times stiffer than your skin. Okay? <coughs> so what I have measured is actually what is the right hand side of the equation, what makes my skin move. Okay? But now when I do the display, what do I, what do I uh, display? Movement. <coughs> Cool. That's all I can do, okay? which is essentially what this model does now. It's very stiff and it will move my skin, if you want, proportionally to the force signal that I've measured. And what is the proportional factor in between? Essentially, in the simplest case, it's stiffness. Okay? You have a similar problem in acoustics when you are listening to a field of, uh, which, uh, of uh, uh, acoustic pressure. It actually makes your, um, uh, your drum move, okay? And the acoustic pressure is only a notion that is valid if you have an absolutely uh, still surface. 
but it's a way of measuring. Okay? So it's the same reasoning here. I have to make essentially a, a, a domain transformation, or no, it's not the domain, I have to, it's called causality transformation. I have to change, if you want, a signal into, from its measurement to a causal form. And, and the factor in the simplest case here is really with the mechanical property of my finger, which is in the simplest case, is its elasticity. Which means that if I have hard fingers or soft fingers, I feel different things, it's normal. <coughs> Okay, for the same, uh, uh, so, so with that um, tangent, um, that's what we did essentially, take, to, to that signal, move the finger uh, proportionally to how we measured the interaction, and apply the factor which essentially uh, is the elasticity of the finger. Okay, <coughs> and, but we did a second transformation, when you do this, what you measure is a, a signal that depends on time, like, like a sound. Okay, here. But when you reproduce it, uh, you should actually, um, mm, if you want, the surface is not something that depends on time, it's still, it depends only on space. Okay? So we did that transformation with the computer, essentially taking the time signal, resolve it through the velocity of the finger that we measured, and turn it into a signal that was based or indexed on space, which meant when the person here was exploring that virtual surface, then the same signal would be uh, present at the same place, which is the way the world is normally. <coughs> okay? so, uh, so in uh, mathematically, that's called resampling. You, know, you take a, a signal that's sampled in one domain and resample it to transform it into another domain. Once we have that done, we ask the question, what do you feel? Okay. <clears throat> and so here the test was to essentially take a bunch of surfaces, uh, like this one, or regular one, like nicely looking surfaces, and then recording these signals, which are uh, here based on space. Okay. Uh, and you can see they oscillate, they are complex, complete lots of... Uh, and it's interesting, it's like in acoustics, if you... Uh, decompose them in uh, frequency domain, you can see that they have uh, uh, characteristics very much like uh, something which has uh, edges it's like burst of energy at certain places which you would expect um, and because you are doing a Fourier transform you have a problem also because you have to choose a window in which you are doing it and here we took the window to be the size of the finger so essentially, we took this really strong uh, assumption that the space that's being sampled by uh, uh, us, essentially the size of the finger. And that was the size of the window of the Fourier transform that we took to come up with these diagrams. And you can see that actually, even then, you have a, a, a very fine grid here, then you have a recognizable, um, if you want, the zones of energy which reminds me a lot of those formants in acoustics, like places that you can uh, essentially track through, uh, through here space, okay, not time. <coughs> and so you have uh, many examples like this, I only have two. And then we uh, ask a subject to take that um, uh, signal and then to tell apart the different surfaces. And they did quite well, actually. That's what they would do if you want with actual real uh, surfaces. So a nice diagonal of uh, uh, re, um, uh, matching with no errors, with the distractors here. But when they did it through the device, they did a pretty good job, actually. There was a confusion here and there between A and E. Uh, so I won't go into the details why, but um, the most uh, uh, likely reason is because our the device, all it does is really move the skin. And it removes a lot of all, all the type of information, especially the, the stickiness. Okay, or the, if you want the low frequency, <coughs> which is also very, if you want, um, um, meaningful in terms of touch. Yeah. I, will, I wish I had more time to talk about stickiness, it's really a great topic. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. But <laughs> here we'll uh, stick to a simple... Uh, <coughs> um, and uh, so essentially here... Just could how yeah. you measure stickiness? Stickiness? What are mm. the experiments? Um, it feels like just 
just a pure felt property. Like okay. Uh, yeah, St uh, stickiness. Okay, what happens? Mm. Right, do you remember that movie that uh, showed the skin is sort of moving, uh, it's sliding on the periphery, sticking in the middle, okay? And, and it has this um, uh, evolution. And this evolution, which happens when you uh, scan, if you want, is a type of a problem which is called free boundary problem. Meaning that the, uh, the skin evolves uh, through, uh, through the loading and uh, yeah, through time. Uh, uh, without any boundary conditions, or the boundary conditions move all the time. And this type of problem are very sensitive to initial conditions. Okay. So when you have, uh, so now, when you have materials which have uh, tribological properties, which is uh, what happens when you have plastic and skin, or uh, wood and skin and so on, then this, uh, the solution of this problem is drastically different. Okay. And stickiness, uh, which is you can attribute to say glass or a certain plastic or even these days a, a glue material makes actually the transition from uh, if you want uh, no sliding to sliding very fast very quick okay so there is a, in a very uh, sharp evolution and essentially what sticking is is is, is essentially this uh, lack of transition if you want. <coughs> Which you can induce in different ways. Yeah. Can I ask about um, how, how you think that um, the patterning of texture is recognised? Do you think it's uh, I mean, the two ways it could be done? I mean, essentially, it's a spatial frequency task. It's like here. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Is, do you think, it, it, and you could convert the spatial frequency task into a temporal frequency task by movement? Mm -hmm. so you could do it with one detector. Yes. So yes. 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 Yeah. So do you think that's the way it is done? With all the detectors, mice and squirrels and whatever, mm -hmm. in the skin acting as independent detectors, which are being used to convert spatial information into temporal patterns. Yeah. And then some sort of central integration which averages or whatever from that. Yeah. Or do you think it's done by simultaneous sampling? Okay. Uh, I, think it's, it's, I think it's a basic mechanical problem. It really has nothing to do with nervous system, but at the origin, it's mechanical. Um, let me remember, because we're in the argument now. Yeah, the uh, wavelength mm -hmm. in tissues uh, is pretty big. Okay, I think it's it really exceeds. So if I uh, impinge a fast uh, 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 stimulation on a place of the skin here, the waves are very large. Okay. <coughs> so now it means that if I have one source, which is very small, or many sources, which are in the same vicinity, as uh, from a physical viewpoint, it's equivalent beyond a certain frequency. So that's uh, and that's exactly what happens when I slide. I have many, uh, if you want, acoustic sources at the surface of the skin, but the wavelength is so big, it really can be. It's only one, if you want. It's and uh, we've done the calculation uh, recently. It really works very well with the. Exactly what you are doing here, which is um, the sliding movement that you observe in people is typically three to five centimeters per second. And it seems to correspond to this physics of uh, waves in, the, in fingers, actually. So, so the argument being that actually when I slide my finger, I, maybe I have this percept of, uh, you know, I really feel in, three, in 2D. But physically, there is only one source, really, because it's a physical necessity. There is no no way the tissues could, uh, if you want, copy all these details at the same time in space and time. And uh, uh, um, a second uh, hint of that uh, observation: now you take your pen, okay, and then you scan the same surface. You do it. <laughs> It's still there, if you want to say. It, well, it's perceptually uh, uh, close. It's amazing when you think of it, actually, because the mechanics are completely different. I mean, you have a pen, and, uh, <coughs> and so, so that's really a strong hint. Actually, these are basic physical uh, limits that you cannot exceed. And, and so, in, uh, so 
in the highest frequency, essentially, there is no space involved. Uh, it cannot be. <coughs> or you would have to have tissues made differently. But Does this, you know? The, um, and then empirically, you tell me the receptive fields of ah. mindfulness are very small. No, uh, yes, no all right. Well, that's another question. Um, um, Maybe I won't go into this now because it's very interesting and complicated. Uh, the notion of receptive field, uh, when you are talking, uh, speaking of touch, uh, um, as far as I know, uh, you know probably much better than I, that there's at least five or six neural levels in, in the somatosensory systems. And I think this notion of receptive field is completely different from which level you are speaking about. Mm -hmm. From uh, uh, human peripheral cells to uh, nuclei in the spine to thalamus and uh, areas in the cortex, uh, probably uh, cerebellum also, <coughs> and um, most probably. And so it's a complex uh, uh, story, which I don't want to elaborate because I don't know much about it, but uh, I would be very careful about speaking about receptive fields because of first the mecha complicated mechanics mm. and, and um, yeah, uh, which I guess are not as uh, intuitive as in uh, um, blurring in, uh, in optics. I mean, it's true. I mean, an awful lot of work has been done in you know, with single units. Single yes, units, oh, for sure. Yeah. In humans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, it's all been done with static fingers. Exactly. Yeah. And <coughs> single punctate mm -hmm. stimuli for the piezoelectric mm -hmm. uh, stimulators on the receptor field. Um, and yeah, I mean, with a discrete stimulus um, of minimum force and amplitude, then the effective receptor field can become very small. Obviously, the receptor field. On mechanics, then depends on the force and the amplitude of the stimulus that's applied to the skin. Mm -hmm. um, so, for Pacini, of course, it's particularly. Oh, the Pacini, yeah. The field can be the whole body. Very, exactly. Very easy. Exactly. You know, I mean, if mm -hmm. I tap my head, then every. Were you were here when I told you an yeah. anecdote of the severed hands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I tap my head, Probably every pitching and cortisol in my body. Probably. But yeah. <coughs> now, an interesting question is why don't I have any tactile sensation from the rest of the That's body? a very good question. So I have some ideas about it. Because <laughs> it's not yeah. just that mm -hmm. pitching and cortisol, I mean, probably some of the receptors never enter consciousness. Yeah. In the screen, yeah. the Ravini endings probably don't enter consciousness at all. Probably. But, yeah. And because you can do that with your. Not body. directly. You can ask people mm -hmm. what they feel. Actually, there's, um, you can see if there's, there's a classic um, uh, experiment by uh, Vado, yeah. <laughs> which is really interesting, like recording from a nerve, I mean from a fiber, yes. and then replaying the yes. same signal, exactly. and you feel something strange. Yes. <laughs> but for some of the receptors, you feel nothing. If you right. stimulate yeah. that, you feel nothing. Yeah. So when you do that to the Virginian axon, you feel a local touch. Oh, you've done it? Yeah, you feel it. Okay. But, so in that case, why don't you feel your whole skin as having been touched? Ah, I have an answer to that, but I won't explain now. Maybe we should... Yeah, but I do have an explanation. <laughs> of, uh, I don't know. Some ideas about uh, that problem. Uh, okay, other type of illusions. <coughs> this one is really, uh, it's a new one. Oh, this one I brought. Because it's really, uh, it's really a, a, an interesting one. Uh, it's here. The idea is that, uh, you know, I mean, you uh, all have studied uh, perception. So this notion of an invariant is, uh, per, uh, you know, pervasive in, in studying senses. We talked about, uh, you know, geometry invariants. But they are physical environments, and you know, like the falling objects. Huh? And we all know that uh, uh, balls fall at the same speed, regardless of their size and the material, which was uh, discovered by Galileo. <coughs> and so uh, it's true; they do all do the same thing, more or less. And that's really a very powerful environment. 
So we thought of that and made an electronic version of it. So here I have a stick, and then inside the stick I have a, a vibrator. It's not really a vibrator, actually, it's really a, a, a bona fide transducer. So it really vibrates with a wide uh, frequency range. I have an accelerometer also, so the computer here can detect the uh, angle with respect to gravity. And what the computer does, uh, it actually takes the component of acceleration, which is the bound of the stick here, naturally. And what it does, it does a one-step integration, which actually turns into uh, this acceleration to velocity. And then it drives an oscillator, which makes this spectrum. Yeah. And that spectrum, essentially, is the one that's generated by a rolling ball down the plane. OK? So for a fixed, what it means is actually the spectrum spreads through time linearly if I don't change the angle. Okay. And so I will plug now and ask Mathieu to uh, yeah. Okay. Just slowly, yeah. So what do you feel? It feels up like, you know sinking inside. Right. It's and it's not kind of directly related, I suppose, to the angle. Yeah. What do you feel? You should have to describe it. I don't know, I suppose it just feels like there's some. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not kind of the smoothest. But it's only, uh, yeah. So the vibrations, the vibrations that happen in the stick, because the vibrations will happen where a ball will be rolling If, yeah, it, it does uh, some, in fact, the simulation is pretty uh, uh, crude. Okay. It's a very simple, uh, but it, in, uh, you know, computation is nothing sophisticated, but it does the right invariant, which is, you know, this. Um, uh, Yes, no. the sound. You can uh, you can try with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it all works together. <laughs> but to, yeah. to get the sense of the sound moving, you have to yeah. see yeah. the thing being moved. Yeah. Even though it's closed. Even with eyes closed, you can, you yeah. you can hear the sound. Because it's such a strong uh, something. How do you know where the stick is? Yeah. You <laughs> have, well, yeah. you know because you can detect yeah. the source roughly. But your mind is so uh, uh, keenly aware of that particular pattern that it has to be a moving uh, object. And it's increasing, that vibration isn't just a, a vibration at a constant rate, it's, it's increasing as, it gets, as the ball, as the phantom ball gets to the end. Right. Oh, when it hits, uh, uh, reaches the end, then you have a kick. But as it goes up, the ball, is the vibration getting big? Or is no, it no, 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 just a constant yeah, vibration? It's a constant, it's uh, constant. Oh, right. Yeah. Can you explain that 
Ah, you would like. Uh, I didn't yeah, bring the. It's probably rather difficult to. Uh, it's. Are those just harmonics? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just moving. Or the algorithm? You have a blackboard here. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the, that display. Uh, I think it's with that way. It measures this component of acceleration. You have the gravity vector here. Yeah. yeah. And it takes that signal, integrate, integrate it once. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just confused about the way that's displayed. Is that in terms of those little white boxes? Ah, Your oh, this is the allot effect of the. You know, sampling, yeah, just the way it's generated. Yeah. Right <laughs> That's time. That's frequency. So when the uh, ball moves slowly, it has a low, uh, you know, low frequency. <laughs> and as the ball accelerates at a constant rate, then the frequency all spread uh, linearly. If, if you were applied the same algorithm with a much longer tube, mm -hmm. would you feel the ball oh, stopping halfway down? When you just no, I guess I will have <laughs> You can make it go a uh, yeah, long distance, for sure. For sure. That's a good question. But this must have an origin of length. Oh, the computer does it, actually, yeah. It, it does this integral here. In yeah. fact, it does this one twice. Multiplies by the correct factor here, yeah. 0.8, and then you get x yeah. from this, and that's uh, and that's x quantity, which depends on time now, is used by the synthesis uh, using uh, an algorithm which is called table lookup, something very simple. So you have a table, and then you have here, uh, if you want the signal, the set. And that's the x. And this, the table is, is like this. It has a regular uh, shape. Okay, meaning that if you uh, scan it faster, then you have faster frequencies, which is like what happens in both. Uh, this is really a copy of Galileo's experiment, uh, the way that he did it in Pisa. Uh, and he did exactly the same. He put corrugations on the surfaces, so he could hear the balls. Uh, and he had monks singing because he didn't have a clock to test. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vincent, so about this, the, I'm wondering about, because you feel a, a ball rolling, so it has a shape, but what about the size of the ball? Can you change? Ah. Can you change no, people? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you stick a, a, a big ball, a small ball, same thing. So, you could not make people believe or feel, sorry. That this is a smaller or bigger ball in that No, tube. it's invariant. But surely we know it with real no. objects. With real objects, you can't identify. No, like that's that's uh, Galileo. You know, all objects fall at the same speed. Yeah, but if we make it look, but by sound, you probably could. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Otherwise that's another question. Yeah. Yeah. Sound yeah. But here, sound. there's absolutely no but attempt at realism. Right. Exactly. It has a memory because it knows where the ball is. Yes, for sure. The next <laughs> right. Because it. when the ball, the virtual ball hits yeah. the end, it yeah. bounces. It bounces. Yeah. <laughs> and it stays there for as long as you right. like yeah. Yeah. Here. yeah, so there's a bit of realism. It just distorts it. So that's an interesting uh, 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 example of um, uh, sensory motor, motor copying. I move, and you know, and essentially this. Sensation is uh, is um, uh, correlated strongly to the way I move. I can move myself. I can see someone moving. It works just. Uh, so, <coughs> so if you have a handle um, and that thing, so and you push the handle down, and as you push the handle down, the stick goes the wrong way. So you did that. Uh, it'd be I'd be curious to know whether um, I don't have that. If there's a way of I'm just, I'm oh, inverted, uh, inverting that yeah, way. So you yeah. Yeah. That your yes, you can. Tactically is it's, down. it's 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 strange, I but mean, you do have a percept of the ball going up the, oh, really? the stick. Really? Yeah. Oh, 
works. Yeah, I, I think we did it by accident, actually. When you know you code, you need to get the wrong sign. <laughs> 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 And actually, it did happen that some people have this perception naturally. Well, so way. That the ball goes the wrong way. Yeah. yeah sure, that's right. So, I suppose I want to ask um, in what sense is this a tactile illusion? So, it seems to me that it's an illusion in as much as you believe there's a ball in there rolling up and down. Yeah. In a sense, when you feel, in one sense, it seems to me it's not a tactile illusion because you're getting just the feedback that you would get. Tactually, if a ball were running yeah. down, so oh no no, so it's missing a lot of. Places. If there was a ball, you would have load. You would feel the weight. Actually, this uh, this happens sometimes when the, we have a version of a very light stick, and then you actually feel <laughs> the you know you have this contingent effect, like you actually feel the load. But Maybe we can't take into account the, the, the load of the bone because we can't see it. And we can assume that is uh, physically inside the, the bar, the, the load of the bone. Yeah. And then maybe uh, this difference I mean, between this case and the case in which the, the real bone is. <laughs> you can check. You can check. I mean, here we have the perception that there is a lot, even if there is it is a lot. Yeah. Okay, but um, you, you said uh, the difference is that yeah, we have a real, a real lot, but maybe we can't distinguish, we can't uh, differentiate be between these cases because uh, we think that there is this height, even with. The main difference is that there's no law. Yeah. Oh, compared to a real law. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, maybe it's not so important for us if we, if we, if we think that there is. That's right. That's uh, exactly. The, uh, I guess the, less, the point here mm -hmm. is the vibration is all it takes. Like, uh, for to me, what I find it interesting is like this F of T signal, this vibration, uh, is felt by me like a position, and I can I can play a lot of uh, engage a lot of um, uh, uh, attentional effort in trying to feel the vibration in my hand. It's still it's still a moving object. So if you, if you took a very big tube that yeah. people need to, to take with two hands and because of the, the lack of weight, then they will assume it's a tiny ball that they get because they will, you know, you would assume if there was a huge ball in that the tube. The size of the ball is as only an impact on the fact that it could be heavy yes. and it could give you more signal. It wouldn't change that pattern. Mm -hmm. It would have the same acceleration. But would the illusion work less well? Oh, I don't know. The... No. Because they would assume the weight of the ball yeah, exactly. at the, at the top. You, yeah, uh, if it vibrates, vibrates off, off. Yeah. With this, if you really think about this, if you really think, yeah. then you can work out is it ought to, it ought to dip at the end when it's down there, it ought to feel yeah. heavier, and it doesn't. It always feels the same weight. Yeah, that's why you know, I, um, I was wondering but but, uh, although, although size doesn't make a physical difference, it makes a perceptual difference. Weight is also something object. which is, uh, uh, is by essence perceptual. Yeah. Now you know this one, turvy, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, so that's a stick, yes. that's a certain weight. Yes. Now you turn it around, yes. much lighter, but it's the same size. Yeah. So, so, it's, so the brain doesn't do the vector product of the... Uh, of, um, it doesn't cause if you do this, so it's only the yeah. angular difference in deflection. Although uh, sensorially we are perfectly equipped for detecting the torque yeah. and, and the force, but we just don't bother doing the calculation. Yeah, There's lots of things like this you don't bother doing the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
well, since we are uh, deviating into the tangent, that's good. That's a good example of a calculation you don't do. So that's a calculation your brain doesn't do. Uh, it's the analogous to touch what the chilean is in uh, is the vision. So, uh, so if I look at a moving object and I have the reference, which is stationary to me and the world moving, yeah. but if I look at the world, the world actually So uh, in touch, if we have a very nice study going on with the back and the uh, uh, we show that we have a similar effect. And here is a variation of it, which is a mechanical computer. And the uh, point is that when you hold objects, they are always, if you want normally, in two situations. Either you slide, and, and uh, I, believe me, uh, that uh, the nervous system is extremely good, that's also very interesting, at telling the sleep velocity. Very good. Although it might not be consciously obvious, but when you test it, it's really incredibly uh, effective to tell how fast objects are moving. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, even stuff like that. So definitely, you have this capability. You also know how fast you're moving. And so normally, in the world uh, around us, when I hold an object, I have either zero velocity between my finger and the object, which is uh, like my normal run, or then I have a, a, a velocity of my hand which is exact, equal, and opposite to my sleep velocity. What happens? And these are the chemical cases. So here, this particular implement breaks that rule. Okay. So here I have a, a, a stimulus, and it moves twice faster. Okay. It's yeah. skewing. Right, skewing. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just put it. And here I have a. a Symmetrical case, it's moving opposite. Same kinematics. Okay. So now, um, the way you experience it, that's how we pilot the experiment. We have a much better equipment to do it. But that's where to start. You essentially feel that little ball moving under your finger when you explore it. And if you want to have the, the effect, <coughs> try to keep it inside the contact area. Yeah. <coughs> So a small movement. And the test, the question is, is, Where is, it, is yeah, it, which way? <laughs> yeah, in which yeah. way again, is it matched to? I mean, it feels vertical, feels fixed in space. But it's not. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So here, same kinematics. I just changed the sign. So we're making assumptions about the world. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the world it doesn't lose the world. They're not normally linked to your own actions. It's only relative motion between you and the world. Which right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's fantastic. fantastic. This is a question I want to ask. Is, is the, so I'm not sure it relates to this, but is the intended action, is feedback from the intended action important in the so same thing? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit scary. I mean, that, that, yeah. this, is, this feels really weird. So, the mechanics of it, uh, yes. Well, the explanation, I guess they are, they are easy explanation, which is to uh, the prior position. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and this controversy is so violent, you right. have to abandon that problem. Yeah. So <laughs> I would uh, hope to believe that there are deeper information in, at the, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go to the code level. Because uh, detection of movement is such an important uh, mm -hmm. function <coughs> that I uh, would imagine that it's <laughs> affected at the uh, very. <laughs> Which explains why the subnormal is different. So much here, so much present here. The set of problems exist in the visual system. Yeah, but it's more complicated here because you can't take stability as a problem. Because things are random, but they only do them. So you have to do the computation on the basis of other information that you're only doing once. Yes. And you do it, yeah. Well, I think I think 
But the example I give my students is when I push on the ball here, yeah. how do I know it's not pushing because I'm tired, nobody knows. And when you think of it, it's really connected, we can do that. Sonary, we can actually decide that the wall is not moving. I mean, I deform my tissues, my muscles are straining, the vestibular system gives me signals. I have this massive uh, uh, stimulus, and what is left is the wall. Which was this for you, Mr. Wilson, because you know it. If I can turn them and then we'll get a chance to have a look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it different? Did you explain again? I think you're. Ah, uh, so so um, the uh, premise of, of this uh, the demonstration is that if you want the no, uh, normal behavior, every object you would uh, hold has zero velocity between your uh, skin, has zero velocity respect to you. So you're moving objects around. Okay. So the object, the velocity of your hand is the same as that of the object to the world. Or the opposite situation. The object is fixed, and then the slip velocity is equally opposite to that of the hand. So now this particular contraption breaks that wall. It will uh, uh, create a perceptor that's moving with on your skin and also with respect to your hand by doing uh, by the pulley system. So is it like a slippy bar of soap that you're trying to capture? Uh, that there's nothing here. The bag of soap is moving on the bottom of the bag. There's nothing in nature you can it. find. I will do that. So, <laughs> so, <no. laughs> it's really the consequence of the pulley. You know, they multiply speed by two. That's uh, not in, in uh, marine. Uh, on your boat, you can change the speed. Uh, <coughs> the speed to the change. It actually feels like a live fish. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it feels alive. Yeah. Yeah. It feels yeah. alive. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's, that's a correct inference, really, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, that's why our friend uh, from the Ministry of Research. Oh, <laughs> 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 that's a correct. But what, what is surprising is that you need to violate the relationship so much, so much. in order to infer that the object is moving. Right. It's and, yeah, yeah. Right. based on your stationary. Are there any differences when, if, if, if somebody sort of, for example, Lee comes along and he's moving my finger for me? Ah, uh, yes. As opposed to me moving uh, my That is a very really complex does argument. Does it switch? Does it change? I, it um, I have a very hard time with it, with this kind of experiments. Because when someone grabs me to move me, it's also giving me a, a tactile signal, okay. which is uh, incredibly informative. So uh, it's not a good. Uh, what we have, I would believe it if you uh, essentially uh, pharmacologically anesthetized the, the, the arm, then I have a colleague in Sweden that then is very good at this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, but you're not, I mean, you're, you're discounting proprioceptive information. Yeah, you'd like to discount that. But you can't discount proprioceptive information knowing no. this is a problem. Well, I have a proprioceptive. Uh, Right, uh, just to, <laughs> uh, maybe, um, I have a maybe idea. I will ask Vincent whether, uh, so you can either yeah, present more is. slides for, it's already seven, yeah. no, no, I've got some slides, minutes, so we can go on just it's more fun to do the, really with the illusions, which is fine, but I don't want Vincent not to get a chance to yeah, yeah, present it's something. There's a very good uh, illusion we are working on now, but this, uh, the last one, it's not published yet, but we took the display, it's really interesting actually. And then we make the skin vibrate uh, proportionally to the rate. Okay. Yes. And but two conditions. Okay. Condition one, all, all the pins are display are moving the skin all that uh, in one block. Condition two, we move them out of phase. And then we ask people, uh, can, do you feel your finger moving? And uh, uh, it's really uh, very clear cut. Like, uh, these are uh, scales in millimeter. This is uh, estimation. So essentially, uh, you know, you, um, you have a sensation of movement, which is 
significant, several millimeters. Like, there's even a subject which is really sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> it really goes out of scale. <laughs> you really feel that this uh, body is moving. Of course, the body is not moving. And the only information that's given is that signal, which is vibra uh, the vibration. So essentially, what it does, it measures your muscle, your uh, muscular uh, output, which is the rate of change of earth energy, and then and then gives a vibration in return. Very very uh, interesting. And we, if we if we have the pins out of phase, zero is basically in the mind. <coughs> So what's the input? Sorry, what's the input to the calculation? It is your own. Your own, yeah. yeah. So the surface is uh, on the force sensor. Yeah. yeah. It's just pushing. You're just pushing down. Yeah. yeah. And this and the direction of the perceived movement is it is well, it's, through the surface. It's through the surface. Yeah. Okay. So it's really yeah. good. It also works for feet. If you push, then you feel the floor going away. Yeah. But it's, it's not small. It's it's like uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's the amplitude. It's the frequency. It's the amplitude. No, amplitude has nothing to do with it. It's only the frequency. In fact, it's not even a frequency. The way I would think of it is a number of events yeah, per unit of time. Sure. Yeah. So it's the oscillations of the finger. Right, as a whole. These are really deeply rooted because they work in the uh, You haven't got that one with you. Uh, that's another one which is really uh, interesting. Uh, this one. Yes. It's about bumps. And so, so here I have a version of it. <coughs> So because it's, it was uh, always, uh, if you want a given, <coughs> but you feel the, sh the position and the shape of objects because you copy. It's actually because your limbs are in contact with the object and then they trace their surface and that's how you feel their shape, which is uh, really naive. Uh, <coughs> and so that's a counter, um, counter case. Uh, here, here I have a, a mechanical device that will actually um, uh, perturb the interaction force between me and, and, and an object. Okay? And then so I'll ask uh, you to put your finger here and then just do what I do here. It's a, it's a bump. It's a bump. Okay. So now I'm just really And I shoot the bump with the hole. Okay, so I'm creating a conflict, yeah? Which is also something that doesn't exist in the region. Yeah. And when I explore in that region here, if I push slightly, I feel the bump. But if I push strongly, I feel the hole. Uh, Around this, uh, no hole on the area. Mm -hmm. Uh, so try a uh, uh, very light touch. Yeah. Now push hard. Just accentuates the, the drop. Right, exactly. Oh. But that's really strange because the mechanics are the same. <laughs> uh <-huh>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> So it so like must be an interplay between your effort exactly. and it's what you do, yeah. <laughs> which creates the system. Uh, <laughs> 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 Can I go back to asking you about the one that was over here that just went past? This one? Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, I'm still not exactly sure what you're supposed to be, why you're creating some situation that doesn't exist in the world. So it just, it felt to me like, 
When I moved my finger this way along the little dot, the little dot just sped up and moved away yes. from me. Yeah. I mean, that's the situation. That's, yeah, compare. that's very difficult. That's really what happens. Uh -huh. But when you compare to the uh, symmetrical case, you don't feel the dot moving at the same speed. Where in fact it does, because it does the, uh, it's the same mechanics. I'm sorry, I'm still not following this. Oh, okay. The two are the same mechanics, which are the same. What do you mean they're the same? Yeah, there's a pulley in each case. So ask how the dot is moving in space. Forget your finger. Then the movement is exactly the same, just in the opposite direction. So you, by moving your finger, you're causing the dot to move in space, which a normal dot is sitting there wouldn't do. You rub your finger, it would always be in the same place. But when the dot moves because of your movement, but it moves in the same direction as you, you don't feel this is moving. It appears to be fixed in space. You're moving your finger over it. But when the dot moves in the same velocity, same amplitude, in the opposite direction, then you feel, oh, I feel it's so with him. Then you feel it's, it's, it's moving, you feel it's really moving in space like the city so. Uh -huh. So the only difference is the sign. In one, it's running away from you, isn't it? It's like it's a straight it's, yeah. yeah. so it's like a permanent so, yeah. so when you move your finger over something mm -hmm. like that, that is actually fixed in space, then the position of the thing shifts across your finger systematically in a way that's predictable by your movement. You might think when you're computing the sensation of it being fixed in space by knowing where it is on your finger at successive times and knowing what your finger is doing. Can't be because if you do what the first one of those things does and double the amplitude of movement of the dot compared to your finger, the finger moves forward a little bit, the dot moves back twice mm -hmm. and then you're forward. So it's really moving in space. If you don't feel that movement, it just appears to be fixed in space. But when you reverse it and push your finger like this, um, and it moves with, it moves more than you, then you instantly feel that. Yes. So there must be some <coughs> sort of assumption. If the thing is moving in the predicted direction across your skin when you move, you just assume that it's right. static. If, if you were adding the velocities together, you would have... Zero. Yeah, it would be yeah. the same. You would have the same sensation except in the direction. But you don't add these velocities. Okay. It's very I wonder if there might be something comparable visually. Uh, if you make yes, smooth, and smooth pursuit, mm -hmm. animals, lots of cats, if you make smooth pursuit animals have a dot to track, and then have one fixed thing in the visual field, um, black, completely right, black, yeah. so you're following a little dot, and you've got this one thing here in space, then as you move your eye, this is moving across your retina. You don't see it moving, it appears to be fixed in yeah. space. It does, yeah. Now, if you moved it in the opposite direction to the animal, ah, like this, yes, you might it appear to move in space. Or, or would it or just yeah. be like this? It would be, yeah, it's worth trying. <laughs> it's worth trying. Yeah. I don't know, uh, I'll ask uh, Wexler, uh, yeah. because he does a lot of that kind of uh, yeah. studies. It's interesting because, uh, yeah, movement is uh, fundamental. Because certainly you can move, you can move with, with you, or move by your instance and see that something's wrong. We do have a study along these lines. We're trying to reproduce the Hildreth uh, vernier movement uh, tactically. And I have a good uh, hunch that uh, it would be similar. Mm -hmm. That you would be able to detect uh, very sharp or very small uh, differential velocities mm -hmm. are provided that they all move together. Mm -hmm. But uh, technically it's a little hard to do, but uh, we can we'll mm -hmm. look at it. <laughs> Just a question about yeah, the solution. So if, if, you're moving, if it's moving in the same direction as your movement, if you increased it by a certain amount, you would notice it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just that... So, so right now it's going yeah. double speed, or, um, but right. if you kept going four times the speed, oh. point, you notice oh. it, right? Yeah, you well then, it. yeah. So it's just that you allow, it's not necessarily that it's totally, it's just that you allow for more when it's moving in your direction versus... I, yeah. I don't know, the way I think of it huh, is that the, the, the computation done is not a vector addition of velocities. 
um, there is some kind of combination of cues with a very strong uh, uh, bias towards stationarity. And that's how you can have a computational model if you want to do that. Let's start. <coughs> And uh, the weight, yeah. The shape illusion, that's really, that's my favorite, but often people don't get it. But uh, um, <laughs> let's try on a nice subject. <laughs> it's also believed often that, uh, yeah, again, like proprioception is the source of shape. Okay? Here is non proprioceptive device. It's completely different, and yet we have this uh, uh, I won't explain, but if it goes well, you won't have to shape this. So you have to rub it with your fingers, and then you explore that without doing it. So it becomes something. That's way too much. So the shapes. Tell me which which one of this what happens to that circle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly what it is actually. Mm -hmm. But your fingers are mm -hmm. uh, at a constant okay. uh, distance. Mm -hmm. And it's within our other direction. It's very, very light. light. So it's exactly what it is. It changes. So on the wall. For basically, it reads zero. The mechanics are the same. The screen tells you it's flat, right? It's not a The shear tells you. Oh, that's a classic, yeah. because it works for touch and vision. <laughs> now this stick looks longer, right? But they are the same size. And when you touch them, same thing. Oh, this one feels a lot longer. Yeah. 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 They yeah, exactly the same size. <laughs> <laughs> so, to answer your question, that's how we tested it. We have a machine, and what the machine can do is, is move uh, the plate on the computer control. So, we can do what you have here, but it's more And then, essentially, uh, we. I skip all the details here. But think of it, okay, the way you think of it is whenever you touch, like the chest, you have an average of one. So, yeah, I put my finger there. I move, I make the aperture bigger. So, that's exactly what I'm saying. And then we took our study and a bunch of studies and put it on a log scale. And what it shows is that actually the first order, which is slow, Essentially, you account for lots of results. Yeah. And then you have curvature and then position. And the crossing asymptotes, one is a finger and an arm. 
And I, I found that really nice. <laughs> because it makes total sense. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. It's George. But that's older studies. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's. I think it's very significant. And that's what tells me that actually the like scale which is a contact mechanics. <laughs> so this is essentially you have a like contact mechanics and waves at small scales, which are the dominant physics. At intermediate scales, you have kinematics. Okay. And then you have uh, 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 rigid body physics at the larger scale. So it's really, you know, it makes, it's what you do in robotics. I mean, it's exactly what you have to do. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Oh, that's the uh, the simplified version from the this one. Okay. And this one we can see. Okay. What do you feel? Sometimes it's long, sometimes two lines, sometimes ah, it's straight, sometimes it's long. Right. It's very good because actually uh, uh, there is a uh, thirty percent proportion of uh, the subject. When they look at it and they are like that situation, okay. that don't get the illusion, which is good actually, because it's a very high uh, case of high conflict. My proprioception is excellent. You know, I have a millimeter de de detection threshold here in size. Mm -hmm. So really, my brain can tell it's really going in a straight line, <laughs> and the skin is telling it's wrong. It's round. Yeah. And so you might easily, uh, you know, uh, have a vice, uh, a vice table percept. Right. Well, it depends, I think, how, how much of your skin touches it, basically. You touch yes, it very, exactly. Then it feels more straight. But, but then in proper condition, you know, with a curtain and people don't know, uh, yes. it's uh, much more robust. Yeah. Yeah. It feels absolutely arbitrary, but because it's seven, and some people might have to go. I think we should come to a, a pretend. This one's really good, also. Okay. We'll still come to a pretend, and, and then we can go on discussing. But um, just in case um, some people have to leave. Yeah, okay. well, uh, Shall we all thank Vincent for this uh, very thoughtful <laughs>